Namaste, and welcome to the next episode of Yoga Vasishta, the awkwardness of adolescence. Well, let's just dive right into it, shall we? Having passed his childhood, the boy gladly steps into youth with hopes of gaining his objects that tend only to his ruin. At this time, the unconscious youth feels the wanton inclinations of his loose mind and goes on falling from one tribulation to another. He is overcome like one subdued by the power of delusive Kamadev, the god of desire lying hidden in the cavity of the heart. His ungoverned mind gives rise to loose thoughts like those of voluptuous women, piercing his heart like dangerous weapons in the hands of children. Vices of the most heinous kind overcome persons of materialistic mind in their youth and lead them to their ruin. Bad habits acquired in youth, upsetting good sense and having no value of approved behavior, cause copious mistakes in life. The raging fire in the hearts of the young, caused by separation from their mates, burns them down like trees in a wildfire. As a clear, sacred, and wide stream becomes muddy during rains, so does the mind of man get polluted in his youth. It is impossible for him to get over the boisterous expanse of his youthful desires. Oh, how one's youth is worn out with the thoughts of his mistress, her swollen breasts, her beautiful face, and her sweet caresses. The wise regard a young man afflicted with the pain of soft desire as no better than a fragment of straw. As youth advances to its highest pitch, so the feverish passions wax stronger for our destruction alone. As long as the delusion of youth lasts, fiends of passion rage in the desert of the body. A foolish man who ignorantly rejoices at his transient youth, flushed with pride and filled with errors, soon comes to repent. Those who have safely passed over the perils of youth are great-minded men, honored on earth. It is hard to pass over our youth that is so full of vices and waves of passion. It is very rare to have a happy youth filled with humility and spent in the company of respectable men. Such youth is distinguished by feelings of sympathy and is joined with good qualities and virtues. So last time we looked at the sufferings of childhood and now we're looking at the awkwardness of adolescence. So adolescence is a difficult time for everyone because the body is becoming adult, but the mind is still childish. In fact, most people these days never grow out of adolescence emotionally. They spend their whole life chasing around, looking for love. Even though all their previous relationships have failed, often violently, at least emotionally speaking, and anyone that they can get as they age becomes less and less certain of success. So there comes a time in life <laughs> when you have to cut your losses. After being betrayed so many times, isn't it time to say, now wait a minute, <laughs> there's something wrong with this. This whole game, this whole process that I've been going through, trying to live my uh, adolescent years over and over and get it right, and it still always turns out wrong. Maybe there's a better game. Maybe there's a higher purpose in life. Maybe there's an activity or a quest that would actually give me some uh, results. <laughs> the problem is, Material objects slip through our fingers like sand. We think 
they solid and reliable, but they never are. I'm starting to sound like Valmiki here, but it's true. This is my experience. Friends turn into enemies. Lovers turn into haters. Even family is very unreliable. In the end, everybody dies, including you. So this teenage quest for love and romance uh, is not something that you should rely on for happiness. You know, maybe it's like gambling. If you have extra money that you don't need, you can go and waste it in Las Vegas. So if you have extra days and weeks and months of your life that you don't need and you can just throw away, then, you know, yeah, have a love affair. Great. Now, I'm not going to say that I didn't go through my phases. I did. But for one thing, I waited. In my 20s, I was celibate. I was a monk. I didn't get into sex life and romance until my 30s and 40s. And by my 50s, I'd had enough. That was it. And I came out of retirement to teach Tantra for a little while to some disciples who really wanted it. And that was seven years ago. And since then, it's over. So I'm talking here from experience. I've gone deeply into sex. I've gone as far as I could. Huh? And, and Tantra is really a bona fide way of approaching enlightenment. But Tantra, just like any other method that involves mental, physical, and emotional activity, is only an approach. It will not give you the final realization. That comes in another way. And that's what Yoga Vasishta is all about. But it will get you to the point where you can overcome this taste for material enjoyment, material activity, material attachment. Because if you go into it all the way, huh, as far as possible, and it still does not satisfy you, then you can understand, oh, this is not really what I want. Just like people who work their whole lives and they're always trying to get more money. They're never satisfied. And they always think, well, if I just work a little harder or if I just keep at it a little longer, I'm going to make it. Huh? I'm going to make the money that I can just retire and do whatever I want. But it never happens. Similarly, the people who go into sex and romance, but who hold back, who don't go in fully 100%, they never reach satisfaction either. And so they have to keep trying and keep trying. But if you go all the way to the end, if you go as far as possible into it, you'll discover ultimately it's empty. Ultimately, it cannot give you the pleasure you seek. Because what do we want? We want eternal pleasure, uninterrupted, unconditional unending enjoyment that can only come from spiritual life that cannot come from any material endeavor. So better you give up on this material sense enjoyment while you're still young enough to develop meditation. My first big realization, first path realization came when I was in my 40s, late 40s in 1984. And how can I tell you how wonderful it was? Huh? It opened up the door that led to where I am now in completion stage. Huh? Getting ready to leave materiality behind forever. But if I had not gone all the way into 
Ro love, romance, sex life, eroticism, tantra, whatever. If I hadn't gone all the way and found out that it was empty, maybe I'd still have some attachment left. Maybe I'd still have some curiosity that, oh, just one more relationship, you know, and I'll, and I'll have it. It just has to go right one time. No, even if it goes completely right, and even if you get what you think you want, it won't give you the satisfaction you crave. Only God can do that. Only realization of Brahman. Once you realize Brahman, you'll realize that the pleasure you got from your lover was like a drop of water in a desert. Or maybe it was even like a mirage of water in a desert. <laughs> it wasn't really pleasure at all. It was just a whole lot of hard work for nothing. So you should take the, uh, take the instruction of the wise, the advice of the self-realized persons. Take it to heart. And look deep into yourself and see how much effort you're expending for such little pleasure. Yet you could be enjoying 24 hours a day if you were linked with God in yoga. That's what Yoga Vasishta is all about. How to do that. And it has many, many, many stories of saints who were successful and how they were successful and what it all means and so on. But first we have to go through and eliminate the things that compete for our time and attention. The things that distract us from our real purpose. The things that keep us from exploring spiritual life to the fullest. And those are these material attachments. These, these attachments to sex life, sense pleasure, wealth, and so on that Rama is going through here one after the other <laughs> and cutting down. We need to hear this because in ordinary life, we never hear it. If we look at the media, if we look at TV, huh, all we see is material success being held out as the ultimate goal of life. But wait a minute, if that's so great, why do all these rock stars and movie stars have terrible drug problems? Why do they often die of overdoses? Why do they often become bitter toward the end of their lives? Because they got what they wanted and it wasn't enough. They got everything that could be got from material life and it didn't satisfy them. So that's the lesson here. Give up this adolescent, futile chase after love and romance and sex. It's not going to give you what you want. Look, if it happens, it happens. Okay, take it with grace, but don't be attached to it. Don't go chasing after it, especially. That makes you a slave. And unless you get off on that, <laughs> that's not a very happy life. So we want real happiness. We want real enjoyment that doesn't come and go, that is permanent, that is reliable, unconditioned. Huh? One, one monk at a big sacrifice one time asked me, well, what is your philosophy? Monism or Advaita or what is it? I thought for a minute and I said, unconditioned non-duality. He smiled, <laughs> he gave me a big smile. And he said, yeah, you've got it. So get out of conditioned life, get out of duality. huh? Come to the real stage of bliss, which is unconditioned, non-duality, which is taught by Yoga Vasishta. 
Aung Tat Sat. Aung Harihi Aung. Karunar Navamai Kardakadinalgum Aruna Chalashivam Yidam